<laughs> right, it is uh, just gone eight o'clock, so I'm sure there'll be a few more people that will uh, will drop in um, as we go. But uh, let's get let's get started. As, as you can all see, I'm joined by two uh, of our most exciting new signings, Andreas de Hazen and Wilco Lowe. Um, a very warm welcome to you both. Thank you for, for giving up your time for, for the Harlequins Foundation this evening for the latest in our An Evening With series. Um, for those of you that haven't joined or, or logged on before, my name's Joe. I'll be uh, putting some questions to the boys, uh, chatting with them about their time um, moving over to Quinn's, um, what it's been like, why they decided to come uh, and how they're settling in. Um, but it's not just about me having all the fun. Uh, as much prep as I do, you guys will have, I'm sure, much more interesting questions as the diehard Harlequins fans that you are. So this is your chance to put your questions to the boys as well. Um, so I'll start it off um, with, with, with some questions, kind of taking them through their journey and how they, how they came to be at the club and how they're settling in. Um, but please do use the chat uh, feature. Send any questions in to me that you really want to ask, any questions that you've been desperate to ask uh, to giant South Africans, um, whether it's where the best biltong is um, that they've managed to find um, or, or anything uh, related to, uh, yes, how South Africa is, is slightly different to, to the UK, although with this sun, we could be in Cape Town this week. Um, boys, welcome. Andre, uh, I've come to you first time uh, for us from the Sharks, an absolute giant of a centre known as Andre the Giant, Esther Hazen eight Springbok caps and you're an invincible in the quarters. Two games, two wins, you're making it look easy. Uh, and Wilco joined us from Toulon, a world-class prop with 13 Springbok caps. And uh, just a bit of uh, trivia, I think the largest known quads of any living man. Um, that's not uh, qualified by Guinness yet, but if anyone is a Guinness representative on the call, we could get that into the world records this evening. Uh, boys, welcome. Andre, I'll, I'll come to you first. Um, how did the move to Quinns come about? When did you first know that, that Quinns were interested in, and was it an easy decision for you to, to kind of move across the world and, and come and join us? Yeah, well, uh, I was actually in the UK um, when we stood, or when we first um, started making contact. I was here on the Barbarians tour. And uh, yeah, obviously I spoke a bit to my agent um, because I was looking to move uh, to another club in another country. Um, and yeah, he gave me a few options and stuff, and I met up with uh, Gazi and Ed Spokes. Uh, yeah, we had a nice beer or two, chatted a bit, um, and yeah, well, we had a good chat, and we shared a few common values, um, obviously with family and so on. And yeah, I think um, like a massive. Um, factor that also helped me is that my best mate was here already um yeah that just makes a lot of things easier and yeah fortunately a few south africans are signed afterwards as well so yeah we actually feel quite at home um yeah and very glad i made the decision nice and i don't, I don't want to say that guzzy has got a type but it after Steph came in, clearly he was impressed with Steph because he's just gone and recruited as many South Africans as he can get his hands on. Wilco, is the experience similar for you? <laughs> Chatting with Guzzi over a few beers or were you out in South Africa or were you in France at the time? How did it come about for you? Um, I actually met Guzzi and Ed in, in, in Cape Town. Uh, I was playing for the Stormers uh, at that time. And uh, yeah, so when uh, I got the opportunity to, to move to the UK, uh, choosing the Holocons was, a, was, a, you know, was an easy decision. And um, yeah, it's like Andre said, there's a... There's a few other South Africans and everyone at the club has been so nice and uh, made us feel so welcome. And, and you know, with, uh, with a little bit of the isolation, we got a little bit of time to, to just feel at home. And uh, then, uh, yeah, it's, 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 been, it's been pretty cool since we, since we got here. And uh, making the decision to, to move uh, from South Africa to the UK, is a, it's a big decision because you pack up your whole life over there. And, um, but everything this side made it, made it so much easier. Yeah, it is, it's a massive decision, as you say, kind of, transferring your life across the world um, coming over here. But, but Andre, you were saying you obviously moved over with your, with your wife, your, your little one, um, and that's actually been quite helpful, having that family come straight with you to kind of help you feel at home, right? Yes, obviously that helps quite a bit. Um, we all can together. Uh, it, it was, if, if, I think if it wasn't for coming a bit later, it would have been tough to bring them straight away. But fortunately, we could order a few pieces of furniture. And as soon as we moved in, we were all settled in. Uh, we had a bed on, a bed to sleep on and so on. 
Um, yeah, and my dogs arrived last week as well. So now we really feel at home. So yeah, the whole family is here now. That's that is important. The dogs are an important addition to the home. It's not, it's doesn't, it doesn't feel like a proper house when the dogs are around. <laughs> how many how many dogs have you got, Andre? Exactly. How, how many? Yeah, have you I've got? got two English bulldogs. Two English, excellent, and that two is, English bulldogs. If, Oh, beautiful. And if you could design a dog for you to have, I would imagine it'd be two English bulldogs, uh, Andre. Just uncompromising like you, get ready to, to stuck into anything they can. Um, and Wilco, for you, you kind of mentioned that having to have that big move across the, across the world and kind of bringing all your stuff over there. You came over with your, with your other half as well, but a weird time because you had to go straight into quarantine when you landed. That's unlike any other sort of move to a new club. You find your new house and you're locked in there for two weeks. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, I guess it's uh, it's a weird time for for everyone around the world. And uh, but luckily, my wife came with, and uh, and yeah, so settling in was pretty easy with online shopping and uh, and things like that. So they just uh, leave it outside the door, and when they go on, you open it, and and this is something that we're not not pretty much used to in South Africa. So so yeah, but settling in was was pretty easy, especially having my wife here. So I'm, I'm not alone for two weeks. So, so that helped a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and and for both of you, it's it's signing for a new club, but in totally different circumstances than anyone could have ever predicted. Um, with lockdown and and coronavirus, and actually then meaning you're joining halfway through last season, I guess when you were expecting to be joining for the start of a new season. Um, I'll come to both of you on this, but I'll come to Andre first. What was lockdown like in South Africa? Because uh, it must be a very very different experience to kind of what we were all used to um, over here. Yeah, it was it was quite tough. Uh, very sudden. Um, first, we had three weeks of lockdown, and they extended it another six weeks, and then they decided that there's different levels. Um, obviously, we went down in levels, but everything still stayed pretty much closed. Um, it was quite quite tough to train and so on. I think the gyms only opened last week or something like that. Um, so no one could have been in a gym or anything like that. Uh, so a lot of running, um, tested yourself discipline quite a bit, um, especially mine. Uh, <laughs> did, you pass, did you pass the every, test? Every, every did you pass day. the test? <laughs> yes, I actually did. Surprisingly. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it, it's, yeah, it was quite tough. So they closed liquor stores and everything uh going with it um so it went on quite long um i think they're only opening the borders now um in october so yeah luckily we we were fortunate enough to get visas for repatriation flights and so on um after they opened the visa departments uh, although it took a month um luckily we got it and yeah we finally yeah no it's great it's great to have you here at I have to say, hearing that the, the liquor stores were closed, I'm not sure how many of us in the UK would have made it through lockdown if we couldn't have got hold of beer. Um, <laughs> maybe, maybe that's just, a, maybe I'm revealing too much on a personal note there, but that, uh, well, certainly my, my <laughs> wife coped very well by having access to gin. So apparently that, that was what got her through lockdown. Um, Wilco, similar situation for you. I think when we were chatting with Steph last time, were you out on the, on the farm um, out in South Africa? So you had a bit more space to kind of, uh, kind of exercise in and, uh, and work out in. Yes, no. Uh, so when uh, our lockdown started, it started on the Thursday, and uh, Thursday morning we arrived on the farm, and we spent the whole lockdown on the farm. Um, you know, so it was a, it was a bit, a bit easier to train, and uh, yeah, luckily we had a nice, nice, nice summer, summer in South Africa. So uh, yeah, we just spent a lot of time on the farm and outdoors, and yeah, it's uh, it was easier for, for for training purposes, but but you're still running by yourself and uh, keeping yourself busy. It isn't rugby fitness, but but yeah, it was good. We had a we, we had a nice nice uh, lockdown in the form. So I didn't think the lockdown had such a big impact on us. But but yeah, so we only needed to go to 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 town like uh, once every two weeks. So so that was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's interesting. Like, it's kind of been a, an interesting thing, like chatting with a few of the boys, like doing these evening with uh, series for for the foundation. Is that actually for you guys as rugby players? Never in your career do you get kind of that long away from rugby and it's it's a real wrench because you're not doing the thing that that you love doing and, and playing the game that you love but actually for your bodies and for your minds to kind of have the ability to be able to reset is pretty rare um in a professional sports person's career and Wilco, i'll come back to you did you find that actually having that time with family on the farm away from everything 
was actually just a bit of a, a good break and a good reset for your body, let alone um, your mind. Yes, definitely. I think uh, like uh, if you like, I've been playing professional rugby for six years, and this is the longest I've ever off in in six weeks, except for for an injury. But that's that's a, a whole other thing. But but yeah, I think it's it, it's good mentally and physically. Um, I think this is the best I've felt in in a few years. So uh, so yeah, I think it's obviously it's 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 good for for the body and the mind. But like for the economy and all of the other things. Obviously, it was it was rough, but yeah, definitely the the, the best time I've I've had off ever. So yeah, I really I really enjoyed it. If I can if I can like put it that harshly, but but yeah, it's it's the first time that that everything's good. There's no niggles, nothing nothing wrong or bothering the body or the mind. Excellent. That's that is what we all want to hear. There's not you're you're ready to go as as you proved this week. Um, because it must have been a mad, uh, Andre, I'll come to you. It must have been a mad kind of few weeks, like getting your visa, getting on the plane, moving into a new house straight into training but we're in this kind of mad phase at the moment where um you've got a game every other day um so how's it been actually in training have you had enough have you had much time to actually get used to playing and training with your new teammates yeah obviously um it's it's never not tough to <clears throat> to go to a new country and settle in and do furniture and like you do here in the UK, you build everything yourself. Um, <laughs> whereas in South Africa, you get it built. Um, yeah, it's the training. The first two weeks, we, me and Volko, we had separate trainings, um, obviously without the squad. Um, so, yeah, of course, we were in isolation. Um, so we trained on our own and stuff. Um, and then, yeah, literally the first. My first training was two days before the game. Yeah, two days before the game. And I had one training session and one captain's run. And yeah, then luckily I got a chance to play. And yeah, then we had four days until our next game, um, which is quite tough, um, especially if you don't, you don't know the people playing next to you. Or you know them, but certain traits of how they play play on the fence and how they play on the tech um, it's, it's it's something you need to learn over a few games over a few trainings um, and yeah obviously it's it's going to take time but this is our first full week of training and I, th I can re already feel it's getting better um, and we're starting to understand the plan and the way we play and so on so settling in nicely now um, Yes, getting ready for the next game, and uh, yeah, it's all going good now. No, that's that's what we like to hear. And, and Wilco, kind of similar for you, because I imagine like with both of you, obviously very different positions in the centres and, and in the front row. But it, you rely so much on the guys either side of you, and, and Wilco for you on on the hooker um, uh, in, inside inside you at scrum time. Like that's a really important understanding that you have to build with that with those guys. How's that been for you, kind of? To throwing yourself into it in the middle of a season um, rather than all having that pre-season to kind of acclimatise and, and gel together in that time? Yeah, it's uh, like I said, it, it, it is tough, but but uh, luckily I had a, a few more days to, to prepare for the game than Andre. Um, so I think it would be pretty tough on the body after six months of, of no rugby getting thrown straight into a scrum. So, so it was pretty good. I had some time to, to work on, on a few things, get my, my neck and and shoulders and back uh, ready for scrumming again. And uh, yeah, like you said, it's it's going to take a while to get to know uh, the hooker next to me and the lock scrumming behind me and the flank. And and yeah, and to, to get to know what they do, where, where they are comfortable. And as soon as they are comfortable with you next to you, uh, yeah, so then, so then every, everything will, will fall into place. And uh, yeah, so every, everyone's been so nice. Uh, you can just, uh, if, if, if it just seems like, like you, you're a bit lost, there's always someone um, who will come and help. And, and yeah, so we, you know, we're really fortunate to have to have great leaders, you know, like in in the squad and uh, and some of the young youngsters like like Marcus Smith. Um, you wouldn't say he's 21 years old. He's got got uh, like so much knowledge and and he just helps uh, like with anything and everything and uh, especially in the back, like guys like Chris Robshaw and Scott Bolden and those guys. They, they really help so much and uh, it, it already makes you feel like a lot more um, and a lot more comfortable. No, that's exactly where I was kind of going to go next with, with my questions, like looking at obviously a whole new set of coaches for both of you, but, but a new set of players. And I've heard from, from Guzzi, he's been very open with us as, as, as fans and supporters and, and staff at, at the club in terms of 
his philosophy about better people make better rugby players. And he wants there to be that kind of culture of, of everyone being able to rely on each other and, and be there and, and support each other. And it sounds like you've experienced that, Wilco. Andre, has that been the same for you uh, in the backs that kind of everyone's been there, been on hand and been, been welcoming and kind of wanted to help you settle in as quickly as possible? Yes, obviously, from, from actually from day one, from the staff, um, all through the players, um, everyone has been helpful. Um, obviously, they've been driving us around for the first week and in and out the hotel and this and that. Um, yes, so obviously, the staff helped us immensely um, and also the players. Um, with players you don't understand or something you forget or just to feel a bit flustered or so. Um, there's always someone that, that's coming from the side, just tell you, listen, okay, th this was going on, uh, do this, do this. Uh, yeah, so everyone's very helpful and yeah, very friendly. And yeah, it's, it's I would say it's a good culture um, that they are living here. Nice. And, uh, and we're coming back to you, obviously, we talked a bit about about the players and, and the leaders that kind of exist in, in the squad, both both young and, and old, I guess, to, to put it a certain way. Um, but for you in, in the scrum, you've got someone uh, coaching you who is just, well, he's an absolute legend of, of, of the game. And I think is someone who's so iconic that, you know, you, you only have to see a picture of him to know who he is. And we're talking about Adam Jones um, here. But I guess two things. One, what's he like to, to work with? Was that a big kind of excitement for you to get to work and learn from someone like him? And also, can you understand a word he's saying through that Welsh accent? No, definitely no. Adam, Adam is a he's a special character, and I, I really enjoy working with him. Um, he's a guy that I can learn so much from, and um, yeah, like you said, he's an he's an absolute legend uh, on and off the field. He's a yeah, he's such a nice guy. And before we, before, like with the whole lockdown, it kept us a bit longer in South Africa. We were working together for a while, uh, like we're doing now over Zoom and and over WhatsApp and things like that. And he's been so helpful and. You know, it, it it helps if you if you're training with uh, one of Britain's strongest men. So I've I've enjoyed working with with Bish as well. He's he's been helping a lot and getting the body and 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 everything ready again for the scrum. But yeah, you know, with uh, with Adam Jones, he's really he's an absolute legend. We had a scrum session today, and it's so nice to to just like hear him help you with with small things. Just put your foot a bit back and change that and, and change that. So so yeah, you know, it's 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 really nice to to work with an absolute legend like like Adam. No, cool. And interesting you said there about doing Zoom coaching sessions. So are the coaches in touch with you while you're out in South Africa then and kind of keeping updated with what they're expecting and giving you bits to work on? Yes, definitely. I think uh, I think that's it, it, it helps you a lot, like I understood with that uh, with with keeping you motivated and keeping you going. Uh, it's it, it's nice to know where you're going and what what's expected of you. And um yeah, so it helped a lot with them just uh, giving you pointers and we had training programs um while we were in South Africa and uh, yeah, it's it's nice to you see that they were already already helping us while we're still there, and uh, and yeah, that that helped a lot uh, with with getting into into like their, their training days and and the, the schedule they have. Cool. No, that's that's really interesting. I, I hadn't realised that there was kind of all of that work going on behind the scenes with, with you guys out there before you even formally joined up with the club. I think that's fascinating. Um, and Andre, I'm going to come to come to you next. Um, but it does apply to both of you. Like all of us as supporters of of Harlequins, we look out for the new signings. When you start to get to that time in the year, you start looking ahead to next season and who the players are that are going to be coming in. And quite frankly, having the pair of you on this call, selfishly, is really exciting because as soon as your names came through the club, um, and I, I, my day job is I, I work at the club as, as well, and kind of the murmur went around the office that we were getting Andre, that we were getting you, Wilco, and it was like, oh, these guys are, this is, some ser this is serious. These guys, are, these guys mean business. Like for... For you guys as, as players, I know it's obviously been a long old wait from signing to getting on the pitch and then it's kind of been really, really truncated in terms of the training and how you're getting out in the game. But for Andre, to come to you, what can we as the Harlequin supporters expect from you? What's your, what's your style? How would you describe your style uh, on the pitch uh, when you're playing? No, well, obviously it's different to any other club that I've played before. Um, I think at every club you come or for every club you play, um, you start creating, a, you still keep your style, but you start adding a bit here and there. Um, so I'm excited to see what that could or can be. 
Um, yeah, obviously, um, I'm going to keep my main attributes um, of running straight and hard. And, you know, um, I like defence quite a bit. So, uh, putting in a few odd eats and so on, um, which is all, always nice. Um, yeah, and I, I think it's the days of a 12 that's just running straight is also over. And just a bit distributing out the back from 12 and putting outside backs in space and so on like that. Um, yeah, I think a bit of everything. Um, yeah, and hopefully I can pick up a few new, sk new skills and new techniques and so on, uh, which could help me and the club as well. Well, I think it's exciting coming to you on, on, and coming back to you, Andre. Like, we have kind of this idea of kind of big centres, like, you know, crash ball centres, essentially just running straight and hard. But you've got so much more than that to your game. You've got a kicking game. You want to bring others into play. And I think that's going to be really exciting for, for us to, to watch as fans. Um, and, and Wilco, for, for you, how would you kind of describe your, you know, we know an awful lot about, you know, your, your scrummaging skill. That's kind of the, the bread and butter for you as a, as a, as a prop. But, but kind of in, in the loose, are you excited to kind of get going with this team and, and show us what you can do there as well? Yes, definitely. Like you said, uh, being a tight head, it's, uh, it's it's my first job to 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 try and get a dominant scrum. And uh, yeah, I just think it's a it's a whole different style of rugby that's uh, that's played in the Premiership. It's a it's a physical, like a, a front up game. So the collisions is it, it's it's massive collisions. And uh, yeah, so I'm I'm looking forward to like Andre said, getting a, a few new skills. Uh, it's not just a, a forward dominant game, but the backs play a massive game. It's a, it's a, it's a good kicking game. And uh, and yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to to learning a few new skills and uh, yeah, getting the ball in hand and and hopefully scoring a few tries from 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 in front there. But yeah, like you like you said, my my main job is is to scrum and clean and and be in the mall. So but yeah, I'm really excited for the for the add-ons and and hopefully I can I can get a get a few few new tricks under the sleeve. So yeah, I'm I'm really excited for for what's coming. Nice and and Andre, back back to you. I mean, you look at our centres now and. We've got such a, a mixed bag there in terms of different styles of play, different sorts of players. But I really feel sorry for the centre pairing that one day has to line up against you and Paul Azike in there. That's going to be pretty monstrous, having the two of you uh, side by side. Uh, that guy's calves, by the way, are the biggest calves I've ever seen. But he's got the voice of an angel. Has he introduced you to a song yet? Have you heard him sing? Yeah, yeah I've, I've actually heard him uh, only on over social media. Um, yeah, he's got a very good voice. Um, wouldn't, wouldn't if if you don't see him sing, you wouldn't say he's such a big, uh, bulky guy that that can sing like that. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, any past tricks? You're not going to be treating us to a song this evening, then, Andre. That's not something that all the centres have to do. Sorry, say again. <laughs> We're not going to be hearing a song from you. You're not going to follow in Paul Asika's footsteps. <laughs> no, not at all. I'll play something on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> good that's about my level as well I think if I started singing you'd slowly watch all the people drop off the call um, and, and actually it's an interesting time to bring a question in that, that Richard uh, sent in on, on the chat and Wilco come to you first on it um, you know talking about your style and hopefully picking up some, some new things adding to your game but obviously the scrum is the most important thing but he's asked um, when you look around kind of the other premiership clubs is there a player in particular that you've kind of that you're looking forward to pitting your skills against that you've seen that oh I quite fancy going up against him um, yeah, it's it, it's it's always nice to to play to play like against someone um, who's, who's got a nice skill set and will will we'll taste you and put you under pressure. But but yeah, this day is after playing one game, I'm really looking forward to to like getting to know uh, everyone you play against and uh, just experiencing like what what different packs do. Like uh, say for instance, so what Sale as a pack can bring or or Bristol or all the other the other franchises. So. There's no one in particular, but but definitely just uh, like getting a getting a flow of it, and and you're getting to getting to know. Like in South Africa, we've been playing super rugby against the Bulls and and the Sharks and the Lions for for so long. So you get to know uh, like what the Bulls are going to bring and what the Lions are going to bring. And uh, you're just after just after playing one one game. I think it's a bit soon, but uh, but I'll definitely, I'm looking forward to scrumming against everyone and playing against everyone. So so I, I can't really say. Uh, one name in particular, but yeah, I'm just uh, just excited to just come against everyone and to get to know uh, the different teams and the different style style that they bring. I imagine for the other eleven Premiership teams, if we ask their props who they're not looking forward to come up against, your name will probably feature a fair few times, Wilco. 
And I'm not sure they get, there's not sure there'll be too many people rubbing their hands together when they see you on the, on the starting team sheet. And Andre, what about you? Are there any players that you kind of had your eye on from, from watching Prem Rugby and thinking, oh, quite like to have a go against him? Yeah, well, obviously, I think most of the teams in the Prem has uh, good centres, um, big physical centres. Um, yeah, I, there's one or two players in particular that I think um, could challenge me very well, which is which are very good players. Um, uh, Manu Tuinagi and uh, Sony Semira Draga, um, yeah. two very good players, uh, which, yeah, could challenge my skills and would like to test myself against them. Nice, nice. And I guess then, similar question, but about, about the Quinns team. I'll come back to you, Andre. Uh, who are the players that, when you signed, you're most excited um, about playing with? Like, who are the ones you thought, oh, I can't wait to get on the pitch with him? Yeah, well, obviously, um, for back is different. Um, so, <laughs> it, we, we don't really look at the pause we play with. Um, <laughs> we just want them to give us front ball, front football. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, th I think in the back, obviously, uh, exciting players like player like Marcus and... Uh, scrum off like Danny, um, which cleans cleans the rucks and is very um, uh, nippy around the rucks and getting the ball quick uh, out of the rucks to the back line. Um, I think that probably nine and ten probably the most for me uh, because I play a lot off nine and I play a lot with ten. So yeah, I, I think or I would say yeah, Danny and Marcus. Nice. And, and Wilco, well, while the backs are doing their hair and telling each other how handsome they look in the, in the changing room, which of the forwards are the ones that you are most looking forward to, to, getting, to getting, get, getting on the pitch alongside with from, from the Quinns boys? Uh, yeah, obviously, it's, uh, Joe Mahler is, uh, is one of the names that's right up there. Yeah, on and off the pitch, he's a, he's a, he's a great human being and uh, yeah, um, I'm glad I'm scrumming with him and not against him. And uh, yeah, obviously, like, like guys like Matt Simmons and, and Stefan Levis and all of those guys. So, so it's, it's it's really nice to to know that you you're playing with with absolute legends. And then uh, obviously a few guys at the back like Danny K and uh, and Marcus. So it, it's it's really cool to be playing with them. And they are like I said in the, in the beginning, they they've been of so much help and uh, just helping with everything. And uh, and yeah, playing playing with 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 a few of those guys, it, it's really awesome. Nice. Um, and look, we kind of talked a, a bit about it in terms of kind of how you guys have settled in. But, but one thing that, that every new signing wants to do, and, and Guzzi spoke about it, I think, in the week, that every new signing wants to do as quickly as possible when they get to the club is to make your debuts. Um, bit of a weird time to do it without, uh, without fans in for you, Andre, and just with those 1,000 Gloucester fans um, in for you, Wilco. But, but for both of you, Andre, I'll come to you first. Although it was in different circumstances, not in the proper changing room and kind of all a bit up in the air with, with all the coronavirus restrictions, what was that moment like when you pulled on the, that, that, that famous quarter jersey for the first time? Yeah, obviously it's, it's nice. Um, any, any debut for any team is nice, um, which is one of the best feelings uh, when you join a club. Um, I would say, obviously with the fans not being there, it, it felt a bit strange, um, not normal. Um, my first game without fans, but still the thing is, you have to be there mentally, and mentally you have to prepare yourself for a game like that, and especially your debut and stuff. You, you and the teammates around you make it special for you, and especially getting the, getting the win after that game um, was just more, or just even better. Um, yeah, it was it was great to get out there, um, get the debut, and yeah, so far two out of two, so it's looking good. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a bad strike rate. And, and Wilco, what about you? Although it was away at Gloucester in, in, in these strange times, what was it like? Did, did were any of the boys kind of around you explaining what it what it means to pull the shirt on, or did, did you not need any extra any extra words or any extra encouragement by that point? No, no, it's a uh, yeah, it's 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 a massive honour, especially with the club with with such an awesome history. As as Harlequins, and uh, it would have been really awesome if, if there was a, a thousand Harlequin supporters at the stoop. But uh, but yeah, it's 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 always special, like Andres said, and uh, and yeah, it's a it's a special bunch of guys, and everyone 
my re- my research special and uh, and you're just running out with the uh, with the jersey on that, uh, that I've been waiting for for a few few months to to do so so it's definitely right up there uh, like you know, it was an awesome feeling and uh, especially after the game um, everyone just just being so nice and made us feel so welcome um, with everything like we said earlier and especially on the pitch now you feel part of the boys that that you've played with them and uh, yeah hopefully there's there's much more to come. I guess that's an interesting point, actually. That it's it, once you played that first game, as you say, you feel part of it. You feel like you're you're actually one of the boys. You're part of the team because you've all been through that together, and that's where those um, those bonds are, are formed. I think what was what, <laughs> pretty funny watching on uh, on um, Monday night that the Gloucester game was Steph uh, Steph Levy's uh, scoring that try, and I don't know how much pressure Andre. You said he's your best mate. You put you put on him since arriving that he felt he had to make a half pitch burst with the ball to try and score a try, but. I think just we're all a bit concerned about his welfare. It looked like he was really, really struggling to breathe afterwards. He is he, is he all right? He's made it into training this week. He's, he hasn't burst both his lungs after that. Yeah, no, no, no. He, he's he's all right after that. Uh, he found his lungs on behind the try line. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is quite a long run, uh, especially for uh, a tight five forward. Um, but. Uh, we we always joked around because he always scores the tries on the five meter because he never gets to the actual try line, and uh, yeah, I'm just glad he went past the five meter and uh, got over there for a try. <laughs> that was a that was a, a mad game against Gloucester. I mean, it's such an important win um, for us in, in in difficult circumstances. I mean, they're they're a really really good team, but was it quite nice to be a part of that? And, and Wilco come to you obviously come, coming off the off the bench there, like actually playing and having that having that game but almost just being really clinical with when we got the chances to score I think we probably had a, a run of playing lots of nice rugby perhaps at times but not being clinical when we've got inside the 22 but we came away with points every time we got into that 22 on one day is that what Guzzi wants and is that what the the coaches want from us as a team to be really clinical in those situations yes definitely I think we, we had a plan going into going into the game and we executed that pretty well uh, there was a few errors here and there, but but it's it's, it's rugby. It's not a perfect world. There's going to be a mistake here and there, and um, yeah, you know, it's like we've 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 got a plan for each game and a plan for the season and how we want it to go. And then uh, it's just our job to execute it on the field. Um, uh, there was a few errors, but but yeah, you know, like I said, that's rugby. There's always going to be a few errors. You just uh, have to make the error 100% uh, with with 100% effort. So so you know, it's a uh, it's it's not an ideal world and. Uh, you as a rugby player don't go out there to to make a to make a mistake. So so yeah, and uh, but definitely we have a, we had a we had a plan going into the game and we executed it quite well. Um, so hopefully we we can execute the plans uh, just uh, just as well against Sale this weekend. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. And there was a nice phrase you said there, which was execute the error with a hundred percent effort. And that's what I'm going to remember next time my wife has said you forgot to take the bins out. Because I can be like, look, I made the error, but I did it with 100% effort by sitting still. So I think there's a few of us noting that one down for, for domestic incidents and, and appraisals on Monday morning, uh, I think, at work. Um, look, there's been loads of questions sent in, so we're going to come on to your questions um, in a second. But Wilco mentioned it there. Before we come on to your questions, I just want to touch on Monday night's game um, up at up at Sale. Um, it's not a Premiership game. It's a Premiership Cup final. It's a chance of silverware for this group. Um, and Andre, I'll come to you, and Wilco, I'll come to you as well on it. But Andre, I'll come to you first. How exciting is that for you know this group of players? You know, there's only three trophies that any Premiership club can potentially win in a season, which is the Premiership, the whichever European competition they're in, and the Premiership Cup. So this is a chance for a real line in the sand for us as a, as a squad in this kind of weird transitional phase coming back after Project Restart with half an old squad, half a new squad sort of getting used to each other. How motivated are the boys for Monday night away at Sale? Yeah, obviously uh, very mo- very motivated, I think, with any final and any cup on the line. I think any team is always up for it. Um, yeah, and especially with a few new guys and the team... Um, now finding each other. Um, I think everyone is very excited. Um, obviously, it's a big game. I think you always look forward to these big games. This is why we play rugby. Um, not to just go through the motion, um, but you want to play the gig, big games. You want to test yourself against the best teams. Um, and you want to beat the best teams. Uh, obviously, bring the silverware home. 
Um, yeah, but I, I would say very motivated and very excited and very focused. Um, yeah, obviously we're going to go out there, give it all and play for each other and yeah, hope for the best. No, I think that's, you rightly say, it's about going out there for each other, giving our all and 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 trusting in, in the work that we've done um, in the weekend over the course of the season to, to see us through the game. And and Wilco, what about you? It's an exciting thing to be thrown in, you know, in your second, third week at the club. You're like straight in with a chance to to win silverware, really put your mark on it. That must be exciting as a, as a, as a player, as a new player coming into this group. Definitely, yeah. Was, um, because uh, like the previous time the club won, won something is a, is, a, is a while ago. So it's pretty special to to uh, to win that win that and uh, and yeah like Andre said I think uh, each rugby player look for for the big games does the the, the the smaller games doesn't mean they don't matter they're just the stepping stones to get to the bigger games and uh, and yeah it would, it would be really awesome to to win something um, for for the players and the and the club and I think everyone's really motivated and uh, this whole week the focus has been to to, to be at our best and uh, and yeah just to I think the biggest thing out of out of it all is to, to enjoy it and. Uh, and they'll just just give it all. I don't think uh, you will be giving your best if you're if you're not enjoying it. And uh, and like we've been saying the whole evening, it's 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 pretty cool to to be enjoying uh, like uh, such a massive game um, after only one or, or two games for a club. And uh, so hopefully we're involved, and uh, hopefully it'll be a special one. Yeah, no, for sure. And I think now we're going to go to some of the questions that you guys have been sending in. And there's a popular theme emerging here. Now we've touched on the Sale Sharks game on Monday, which Phil, Jane and Tim have sent in sort of questions around. So we'll try and get through all of them, guys, um, and probably I'll amalgamate uh, in between your questions. But, uh, but Phil asks, how well do you guys know all of the South Africans playing for Sale? Um, and uh, Tim, I'll combine um, Tim and... Uh, Tim and Phil's question here, because Tim says, how are you feeling about facing off against a number of fellow South Africans in the Prem Cup final? Because I guess it must be mixed. Like you probably know quite a lot about those guys um, from, yeah, from your time in South Africa and or know, or know of them pretty well. But does that make it familiar or, or unfamiliar that you're, you're, you're both playing in a, or you're all playing in a final over here up in Manchester where I'm pretty sure it probably won't be as nice and sunny as it has been here the last couple of days. Um, uh, Andre, I'll come, come to you first. Like, what do you know about those South Africans that are up there at sale at the moment? Yeah, um, for me, it's pretty different. Uh, I know most, actually all of them. Um, half of, okay, actually more than half of the South Africans there uh, was of me at the Sharks. Um, then everyone left there, uh, played a few Springbok games with Lewitt and them as well. Um, yeah, so obviously know them very well. I'm very good mates with the, the Priya twins and Kuni and Aka. Um, yeah, look, actually looking forward to playing against them for the first time. Um, they're good players and very hard players. So it's, it's going to be a tough one and it's going to be a long day. Um, I think we're always mates, but as soon as you step on the field, it's something else. Um, yeah, and obviously you want to you wanna show your... Sh sh or, always show up against your mates and uh, show who's the best there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's always a bit extra, but I always play much better when I'm playing against people I know because I really want to prove that I'm better than them. Um, I mean, it never works because I'm absolutely useless at sports, but but I try really hard and that's the important thing. And what about you, Wilco? You probably know a lot of the guys as well. Like, is, does it give you that extra edge of motivation want to get one over on the guys that you know? Yeah, no, definitely. The only guy I've played with in the same team is, uh, is Kubis Visa and the other guys I only played with him uh, at, at, the, at the Springboks. But, uh, but yeah, it's always nice. Uh, so um, it's always nice playing against a, a familiar face and someone you know. Um, there's always a bit of banter on the field and uh, hopefully there'll be le less banter this week. But yeah, it's, 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 it's always good playing against someone you know. And um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's, a different, it's a different type of rugby their side. So it'll be, it'll be nice to play them uh, just in a different style. <laughs> for sure um, and then Jane has sent in a question here and Andre I'll, I'll come to you as you know uh, the, the Dupree uh, brothers pretty well um, have you got any any dirt on them that you can pass to Danny or to, or to Joe Marler to really try and wind them up uh, come on then you must have some stories about them that you can give to the Quinns fans here and, and say this is this is what we'll be saying this is what Joe will be in their ear on the pitch with <laughs> yeah no um, there's, there's only one, uh, one liner that I'm going to say and it's what happens on tour stays on tour um, so obviously <laughs> it's, I, I don't think it's very hard to wind them up um, they they're very aggressive players and yeah 
that that can lose their heads quite quickly. Um, so, yeah, I don't think it's you need a lot of dirt on them to make them angry. Um, but sometimes when they're angry, that's when they start playing, actually. So, yeah, it's a 50-50. It's a gamble if you do it or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we know, uh, if there's one thing which, as Quinn's, the Quinn's faithful know about Joe Marler, it's that he is prepared to gamble to try and wind someone up. So uh, I think there's every likelihood we'll see uh, what, at least one of the Dupree brothers pretty angry. Um, right, let's have a look at what other questions we've got um, got here. Uh, oh, Richard sent a question in specifically for you, Wilco. Um, we mentioned your farm earlier, and this is uh, for... Um, maybe we've got members of the farming union on the call, but this is an important question I want to put to you. Where is the farm and what type of farm is it? Uh, what size is it? Is it arable or livestock? This is what we need to know on farming news this evening. Oh uh, yeah, so it's, uh, it's my parents-in-law's farm and it's in, in the Western Cape in South Africa. It's a, a, a small town called uh, Glen William and uh, it's, a, it's a citrus farm. So it's oranges and, and tea. Like it's, it's in South Africa, it's a rooibos tea. So it's rooibos tea. And uh, then me and my wife, we, we started with, uh, with Aberdeen Angus cattle and a little bit of sheep. So, so yeah, we, we're getting into, into the, the cattle farm. So we're pretty new to it. So it's pretty cool to, to, uh, to see other people in, in the UK do it. So it'd be cool to, to experience a, a bit, uh, something different and maybe, maybe we can learn some, something from them and, uh, and yeah, so but it's a little bit of a little bit of livestock, and then uh, and then it's uh, oranges and uh, and rubus tea. That's, I'm familiar with with rubus tea from the last time I went to South Africa. I've got family out in South Africa, and I went to make myself a cup of tea. They said just make yourself at home, and had not had rubus tea before, and made it in the exact same way you would English breakfast, and it was the most terrifying experience of my life. I think it was only about eleven or twelve at the time, and I've not been back to rubus tea because it's just, it's not right. It's, it's, it was not how we have, we have nice PG tips builders tea over here, get used to that as well. Um, <laughs> uh, and then a, a question for you, Andre, from, from Richard Porter here, um, and a topical one, um, a, a, an interesting one, which is, uh, what's your view on Owen Farrell's tackling technique? <laughs> yeah, I, I knew that question was going to pop up somewhere. Um, yeah, well, <laughs> I don't know. Um, probably all everyone actually have their own tackle technique, which helps or works the best for them. Um, obviously, that technique is not the safest in the world. Um, it's going to get you out of trouble some, sometimes when big guys run at you, but it's also going to get you into trouble um, when a few other oaks run at you. Um, yeah, so if, if I was him, I would probably... Uh, go back to training and uh, assess my tackling technique and uh, just try a bit of change. Um, but obviously, uh, that's how the league, rugby league, used to defend. And um, I think he played a bit of league in his young as the younger days. And, um, yeah, sometimes it's hard to lose the old habit. And uh, it's, yeah, I, I, I when, when you're in trouble, you used to, or you tend to go back to something you, you know, um, and you know it's going to work. And yeah, I think that makes it a little bit different. But uh, yeah, if you want to play rugby, it needs to be safer. And uh, yeah, you can't uh, decapitate someone like that. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Andre, if, uh, if the rugby doesn't work out for you, and we all hope it does. Uh, you've got a career in politics because that was an incredibly diplomatic way of saying it's bloody dangerous and you really took my head off. Um, <laughs> um, it's a couple of interesting ones that have, uh, that have come in here. Um, and actually one for, for both of you, and I'll come to you, Wilco, uh, on this. This is from Tom uh, Brown. Um, so he says, firstly, welcome to Queens, both. Um, but uh, a question for you around international ambitions and, and I guess for you, Wilco, like how does the move to Quinns affect your international ambitions? Um, because he's very looking forward to seeing you uh, in the quarters, uh, but hopefully also the green and gold again soon. Yeah, thank you very much, Tom. We, we already feel, feel, feel very welcome. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely a massive honour to play for your country. And uh, yeah, it's, still a, it's still a dream. Um, every, uh, every, every rugby player wants to play for their country. And uh, with us moving abroad, um, nothing changes. If if we select, if we can still play, um, can still play for for our country. And um, yeah, it's it's always a massive honour. It's 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 every 
every mm-hmm. every man's dream to play for his country and it would be awesome to represent him again. And uh, and yeah, so so that's still that's still on the cards for 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 us so moving moving to 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 Harlequins and uh, and yeah, it, it, it's still a big dream. Great, and, and probably similar for you as well, Andre. I imagine. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, we always strive to play for the national team. Um, yeah, and if, if we can play for both, uh, that would be great. <laughs> well, that's 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 what we hope. I mean, let's focus on focus on Quins for now, and then we look forward to seeing you in the green and gold. But but you can play for South Africa, but not when South Africa have to play England, if that's all right. Just you know, we need to try and weaken you guys anywhere <laughs> we can. Um, if, if there's a way, I'll see if I can qualify to play for South Africa when they have to face England, and I'll just throw the ball to whoever's running at me. Um, <laughs> uh, Jane's sent in here for, for both of you, and, and Andre, I'll come to you first on, on this, but, but we'll, we'll come to you as well afterwards. Um, firstly, she says it's great to have you both in the squad. Um, but she adds, Quinn's like to throw the ball around and, and, and play running rugby. Um, but she wants to know, do you think that super rugby or the premiership is quicker? And... Good follow-up question here from Jane. Is that affected by the referees at all? Like, do you, have you noticed a difference in, in the way the game's refereed over here when you're on the pitch? And, and yeah, which of the two types of rugby do you think is, is quicker or, uh, or, or faster? Uh, Andre, come to you. Yeah, um, obviously I've only played two games now. Um, but by the looks of it, I think Super Rugby is still a bit quicker. Um, I think there's quite a bit of penalties uh, in the Premiership. Um, which they tend to blow very quick, especially at the breakdowns. Um, but, yeah, um, it, I think it also depends on what games you play because some games here yeah, can be very quick. You play teams like Gloucester and Exeter and some, or well, not really Saracens, um, that likes to run. Um, then, then the game gets quick, especially for Harlequins that likes to run and play as well. Um, but, yeah, you get your odd games that people or that other teams just like to kick uh, play territory, put you back in the corners um, which makes it a lot slower. Um, it's set piece after set piece and scrum resets. Uh, I can imagine with the rain and stuff yeah, as well a lot of scrum resets and so on uh, which makes it a lot slower as well. Um, whereas in South Africa and um, in the sub rugby we you, don't really have a lot of rainy games um, because, yeah, it, it doesn't really rain too much South Africa, uh, which is unfortunate in some ways, but good for the for rugby. Um, yeah, but I think it's a, yeah, sometimes it can be rough. Um, yeah, I think different circumstances um, changes every game. It might be the rough, might be the weather, um, or it might be the team you're playing. No, oh, interesting. And, and and Wilco, would you kind of say similar? I imagine as a, a, a back and a forward, you've probably got different views on more scrummaging uh, going on in games uh, and whether that's a good or a bad thing. But kind of would you would you agree with that kind of assessment uh, that Super Rugby probably is still a bit a bit quicker, but it's dependent on all those other factors? Yes, I would say I would say Super Rugby is a bit. I, I've only played one game, but but uh, from the few games that I've watched, and uh, I think Super Rugby is a little bit quicker than the than, than the Premiership. But uh, yeah, like Andre said, I think with the wet weather and uh, and uh, and you're, like everything, but I think there'll be a little bit more, um, a little bit more scrumming, and I can guess there'll be a little bit more mauling. And yeah, you know, I, I think it will be a, bit, a little bit slower, but uh, I think in general, uh, like now with the weather we've been having, I think uh, like the teams are more than capable to throw the ball around and, and make it quick. Like this this past weekend um, against Gloucester, um, I, I think it was a it was a pretty quick, uh, like quick breakdowns and quick ball, and uh, yeah, I think that's. In in in, in uh, these days, that argue everyone wants uh, wants quick ball. Um, yeah, so so I think it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see uh, in in the winter months when it's a bit when it's a bit wetter. Um, how it's going to like how everyone's going to adapt to that and uh, and yeah, that's something to look forward to because like Andre said, we're not used to that. We we rarely play games in in in, in wet weather and uh, yeah, so it's gonna be a nice thing to adapt to. Yeah, no, it's that it's that extra that extra challenge. And while we're just on the topic of uh, Super Rugby and, and South African, um, kind of the, the club game out there. Jane's also asked, do you think it's a good team if the South African, a good team, a good thing rather, if the South African teams uh, would join the Pro 14? Do you, do you have any opinions on on that? We'll pick come back to you. Uh, yes, I, I, I think uh, change is good, and uh, and yeah, um, the Super Rugby competition has been going on for so long. 
and uh, and yeah, it's 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 a it's a yeah, like I said, it's going on for so long, so it's got a it's got a good history, but. But yeah, I definitely think uh, it'll keep it'll keep rugby uh, competitive. Like uh, for us, uh, for the South African boys, might be like experiencing a little bit of more wet weather and uh, and yeah, like like a, a little bit of more forward dominating game. And yeah, I think change is good. And uh, yeah, so we we'll have to wait and see what happens. No, for sure. And Andre, similar for you, that that idea that ch- that change is good and it's good to try and mix it up rather than playing the same teams all the time. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Uh, I think change is always good. Um, it's it's why I actually came here as well. Um, I've been in South Africa for quite a long time. Um, did a small stint in Japan, uh, which worked out well for me. And it, it just showed me a bit of change of environment, change of teams, change of rugby style. Um, always help you individually. Um, it grows you as a player and yeah obviously it was time for me to um, move to the UK or yeah and let's let's hope for another good chance for sure um, now one thing that you, you can bet on um, is that having a couple of uh, big South African guys on the call that as well as all the rugby questions we've had sent in there are more than a few questions about food uh, so we will come on to the food-based questions to sort of wrap this up this evening. But before we do, there's one other rugby question I'll ask you both that Ellie uh, has sent in, um, which I think is is a really fascinating question. I'd be interested to hear from both of you, given the careers that you both had uh, so far. Wilco, I'll come to you first. Um, what's been the most memorable moment in your professional um, playing career? And I'm going to put an extra brackets on the end there, which is apart from playing for Quinns for the first time, because we know that's obviously top. Um, but yeah, what's what's been the most memorable moment for you in your career so far? Uh, for me, definitely uh, making my Springbok debut. Uh, I was playing for the Stormers, and uh, the the home of the Stormers is the Edge on Newlands, and uh, so I was fortunate enough to to make my debut against the All Blacks uh, on on Newlands, and it was so cool with my family there, and uh, everyone everyone close to me uh, in the stand, and uh, yeah, it was really. It was really an awesome feeling, and uh, yeah, it's a it's a dream come true for like I said earlier, every every rugby player's dream to play for his country and uh, to make my debut against against the All Blacks with with my whole family in the stand and my wife and and my my, my parents-in-law. So it was it was a it was an awesome feeling, and definitely a day I'll 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 never forget. And then obviously making my my debut for the Queens. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that must have been unbelievable like, what an amazing thing to have experienced and Andre what about you your most memorable moment uh, in your career so far yeah obviously uh, I wasn't that fortunate like Volko um, to have everyone around there um, but yeah I made my debut in uh, America actually it was a once-off game um, against Wales um, also my debut for the Springboks um, yeah I was fortunate enough to have one of my best mates there um, to watch the game because it works there um, but yeah I would also say uh, one of my best moments was or probably my best moments uh, in rugby was to make my debut there and have any good game yeah I mean it must have been you must have both felt so just unbelievably proud to pull on pull on that shirt for, for your country and play for your country for the first time I can't even can't even imagine what that must be like uh, it must just be ridiculously exhilarating um, so uh, I We've done the rugby chat now. This is the important bit. We've kind of got to the last seven or eight minutes or so because we have to have a hard stop at nine o'clock because that is unfortunately my bedtime. Um, and uh, my wife's really, really hot on that. Um, that I've really got to make sure that I'm tucked up by nine. Otherwise, I'm an absolute nightmare tomorrow. Um, so uh, we will stick to, stick to that time frame. But uh, before then, and I'm trying to work out which order to go through these in. Uh, I think I'll go to Tim's question first. Um, I think he sent this in when we were talking about uh, Adam Jones, uh, Wilco, and I'll come to you first, um, but uh, be interested to hear how both of your answers differ to this one. Um, Tim says uh, he once got bes- stuck behind Adam Jones at a well-known burger restaurant. We're not the BBC, I think we can say McDonald's. Um, once got stuck behind uh, Adam Jones at McDonald's in Dubai Airport. Uh, there wasn't much left after he'd finished. Does the same thing happen down at Guildford, down at Surrey Sports Park in the lunch queue? So we can start with Adam Jones, but I think the question I really want to know is, Who's the worst person to be behind in the queue for lunch? Who really, really goes for it when, you, when you're down there? And who are you like, oh, I've got to get in before them, otherwise there'll be nothing left. Will Co come to you first? Hopefully Andre's not going to stay behind me, but, 
but yeah, no, this isn't, this isn't uh, with this with this whole uh, Corona thing. So we we don't have lunch, uh, everyone together in a in a in in the same room. But uh, but definitely one of the, one of like the big guys. I would uh, I would prefer that I'm in the front of the line and uh, not the big guys like like Adam and and the other props. So if uh, if you wanna if you wanna get in line, uh, if you don't you don't go behind the props. You normally go in front of them. <laughs> I was going to say, Andre, you're obviously going to say Wilco now, right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, no, like I said, we, we haven't been able to uh, eat together or eat your face together. So, um, yeah, but I, I can only imagine, must be, I think, most of the forwards. Um, I think in any team, always, if you're back, you try to get in front of all the forwards. Otherwise, there won't be anything left. <laughs> and then uh, now we're on the topic of eating. Elliot has sent a question in here, which is, uh, and Andre, come to you first, and then on to you, Wilco. Um, I'm not going to answer it because luckily you don't have to see me from the uh, from the chest down, so you can't tell. Um, which is, how many calories do you eat uh, in a day to maintain your weight, and uh, what kind of does a typical day look like uh, for you to maintain those calories? Uh, Andre, come to you first. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not very big on a diet um so far <laughs> if i want to pick up weight it it just uh, happens very quick i just look at the burger and i'll pick up weight so uh yeah it's it's for me it's different um i, I don't even know how to count calories to be honest with you um i eat a lot of i don't eat a lot of takeaways though um very homely food i'm not saying it's the um, most healthy food always, but uh, yeah, we like cooking at home and making our own food and stuff. So always only cook meals. Um, but yeah, if if I want to stay on my weight or lose a bit of weight, I just do a bit of in, intermittent fasting. Um, like I'll I won't eat in the morning and during the day, and I'll only have one one meal at night. Um, it's not always the healthiest, but uh, it helps. So, yeah, but it, it's I think you just got to do what works for you. Yeah, exactly. Especially with 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 you guys and, and rugby players on on the whole, it's so interesting hearing from different guys. Some guys, like you say, look at a burger and start putting weight on. Other guys literally just have to get up from the chair and they start they lose weight. So they've got to keep putting the weight back on. What about you, Wilco? Do you have to have kind of a pretty serious like eating regime, um, as it were? No, not really. Um, I'll say after lockdown. Uh, uh, normally for me, if I'm very heavy, I just uh, go on a white bike and uh, they are just uh, like the same as Andre, me and my wife, we like to, to make food um, at home and uh, I love a barbecue and uh, so yeah, it's uh, for us it's the same, we like cooking at home and uh, yeah, and if, I, if I'm a bit too heavy, so it's like after lockdown, I just get on a white bike, I, I just put a bit of effort in, in uh, a little bit of more cardio, but the same as Andre, I don't have a calorie count or set diet that I that I go through every week or, or every month. But, uh, but uh, as soon as the, as the scale goes up a bit, I'm just on the white bike that it's down. And then, and yeah, so, so it's basically the same as Andre. Hey, that's, that's the right way to think about food, I think. As soon as you start worrying about it like that, you stop enjoying it too much uh, when you're, ca you're counting calories. And Wilco, I think you're the first South African I've ever heard say barbecue instead of braai. So clearly you're settling in over here in the UK. Um, <laughs> 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 um, and actually, that brings you on to... That, I don't think this is this person's real name um, that they put in here because it's uh, 950261. So hopefully that's not your phone number, otherwise we'd all be calling you. Um, but they've asked, have you found the South African pub for a braai on Sunday, uh, which is the person arms in Chilworth yet either of you or is that a good recommendation from this call I've, I've been there and uh, it, it's, it's really good I live in Chilworth and it's uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's just uh, down the alley so yeah I've, I've been there and it's really good uh, I'd, I'd recommend it excellent and what about you Andre have you checked it out yet no no I haven't, I haven't been there yet uh, only at one time there is um, at the mall in uh, Elstead uh, which was very good. Um, yeah, I haven't been to Percy Arms yet, um, but I brought my own. So. <laughs> well, no, it so sounds like he's waiting for the invite, Wilco. You can't leave him hanging like that. Now you've said that you've been, he hasn't been. I don't want to, don't want to come in between you two guys on this. Um, and then, and then the last question um, that, that we'll take here has been sent in uh, by Burge. He says uh, to both of you guys, um, and Andre, I'll come to you first. What is your favourite flavour of Mrs. Ball's chutney? 
Uh, he says it's one of the best imports from South Africa, aside from Wilco and, and Andre. So, so Andre, what's, what's the best flavour of Mrs. Bull's chutney? Do you know? Yeah, I'll, I know there's, there's two, actually. Um, I like the original a lot, especially with cooking and stuff. Uh, but I like the peach as well. Uh, nice. Yeah, both. One, one on a bra uh the other one in in your cooking. Yeah, I'll, I'll think, yeah, peach and the original. Very nice. Wilco, what about you? Is that same or different? Oh, definitely. The peach is my, my, my favorite. So back on me, we normally just get the peach. Hopefully I can get a bottle of, bottle of peach, uh, Mrs. Balls, uh, soon. <laughs> <laughs> but Burj here yeah. said, I, I, I said extra chili. I think someone's just trying to show off there. Um, <laughs> um, guys, that that's, hits us to nine o'clock on the nose. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you guys. Uh, I think I speak for all of us um, Quinn's supporters, Quinn's fans, when we say it's, we're so thrilled to have you guys as part of the club, to see you playing in the quarters and to see what you guys can accomplish, not just in the next week, months, but, but over the next few seasons. Um, it's certainly an exciting time to be a Harlequin. Um, but before uh, we leave you guys, before we head off, uh, I can't have you both on here the week before a match and not ask you for a score prediction for the Premiership Cup final. So to wrap it up, uh, Andre, I'll come to, come to you first, which gives Wilco a chance to think about how high he's going to go with his massive Quinns win. Um, say to you, Andre, Quinns by how many on Monday night? Uh, I would say Quinns by six. Tight, nice. And Wilco, what about you? Uh, I would say Quinns by 13. Quinn's by 13. Well, in that case, it's good news for everyone on the call because it sounds like we're definitely going to win. So I think we can all relax over the weekend now. The boys, the boys have said it. That's a weight off my mind. Uh, guys, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us tonight. It's been an absolute pleasure. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the flesh soon rather than on a Zoom call. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Cheers, guys. Thanks so much for having us. Bye.